Dr. Ross, hi, my name is Mark. I picked up your uh, DVD, uh, Journey Toward Creation. Liked it very much, and I have a question about that. Uh, you mentioned the Boomerang Project that investigated the rate of expansion of the universe, and you bring up uh, mass density and space energy density as uh, two different things that account for the initial push and the initial expansion. Uh, that's mass density and then space energy density that actually gives it uh, the expansion of the universe an additional push about eight billion years after creation. My question is um, what provides that second push? The, the first push I understand like the explosion of a hand grenade for example but then the initial push I do not uh, I don't really understand that perhaps you could illuminate that. And could you take us back maybe a step so the rest of us can be clued in as to what sure. he's talking about? <laughs> Thanks. Okay, he's addressing the issue of the mass density of the universe and uh, the space energy density, or what is now referred to in the newspapers as dark energy. And uh, I'll be talking about that in my lecture tomorrow morning. And the reason why we're going to spend some time on it is that's where we find the greatest evidence scientifically for supernatural design. These are the two most highly fine-tuned or designed characteristics that we astronomers can measure in the universe. Now, the mass density influence on the expansion of the universe is understandable in the sense that if you've got, uh, oh, here we go, two massive bodies, uh, they will tend to attract one another. And I already told you the closer they are together, the more powerfully they attract. So when the universe is young and therefore small, uh, gravity will be powerful in its capacity to slow down the expansion of the universe. But as the universe gets older and older, and hence bigger and bigger as it expands, gravity will become progressively weaker and weaker in its capacity to slow down cosmic expansion. Now, dark energy is something that often mystifies lay people because in newspapers they call it an anti-gravity term. Well, it's not really an anti-gravity term. Tomorrow I'll describe it as an anti-elastic band effect. And I didn't bring my elastic band up here with me. I'll have it tomorrow. But just imagine I'm stretching an elastic band. The more you stretch an elastic band, the more energy it gains to force contraction. Now, I mentioned in my talk that Isaiah talks about how all the matter and energy of the universe is on the three-dimensional surface of the four-dimensional expanding universe. And scientists have now discovered that the very surface of the universe acts like an anti-elastic band such that the more you stretch that surface, the more energy it gains to force even more rapid expansion. And so when the universe is young and therefore small, that surface is weak in its capacity to accelerate the expansion of the universe. But as the universe gets older and older, it gets bigger and bigger, and the surface becomes stronger and stronger in its capacity to accelerate the universe. And the gentleman at the microphone correctly pointed out that we astronomers can determine that the universe was slowing down under the effect of gravity for the first eight billion years of the history of the universe. For the past six billion years, dark energy has been stronger than the gravity effect. So we now live in a universe that is, that is expanding at a more and more rapid rate. And in my final talk tomorrow, I'll talk about the profound theological implications of living in a universe that expands more and more rapidly as uh, every year uh, goes by. But in terms of exactly what it is that kicks off the expansion in the beginning, it's the fine tuning of the laws of physics. What we, what we learn in the book of Job, for example, is that God alone expands the universe. And uh, there are three passages in the Old Testament that tell us that the expansion of the universe was factored in at the very beginning of the universe. So from a biblical perspective, uh, God builds into the physics of the universe itself the properties that guarantee ongoing continual expansion from the creation event forward. Now, have physicists discovered exactly what that is? Not yet. Uh, we've been able to determine that there is dark energy, but exactly what's responsible for that dark energy, uh, wait and see. There are measurements undergoing. Perhaps within five years, we can address that specifically.